So in these first five questions here, we are asked to draw an angle. And once we draw it, find the coterminal angle, if possible, and a reference angle. So that is what we're going to attempt to do. All of that in this tiny little space, all at once. So let me get my pen out. Pick a color, any color. How about this color? Yurple sounds fine to me. So negative 350 degrees. So here's where we start along the positive x-axis. And negative degrees is go clockwise. I'm going to draw an angle going clockwise almost all the way around. There we go. So there is my negative 350 degree angle. It ends up being in the first quadrant. Now my coterminal angle would be one that starts and goes positive. So an angle coterminal to this would be 360 minus 350. So we're going to add them together. Or a 10 degree angle would be my coterminal angle. They have the same ending point. If I didn't see this little curly Q here, you could not tell the difference between a negative 350 and a 10 degree angle. Now the alpha or your reference angle is always the angle formed with the x-axis and in a first quadrant angle, the reference angle, your coterminal angle, and your angle angle are all the same. So here I have a coterminal and a reference angle, both of 10 degrees, because it's in the first quadrant. Okay, moving on, 665 degrees. So that's positive. It's more than 360, okay, which is one revolution, but less than 720, which is two revolutions. So I have not quite gone around my circle twice. Okay, but how much have I gone around? So let's do this. Let's take 720 and minus 665. That means I'm going to have, let's see, 1 borrow of 5, 71 minus 66 is 55. 55 more degrees here, which means I'm going to end up being in my fourth quadrant. So I go all the way around the circle once. And then here's twice, and I end up over here somewhere. At exactly 665 degrees. So my coterminal angle would be the positive direction around here just one time. If I were to go one time around the circle, where would I end up? At how many degrees? So there's a couple of things we could do. We can do it the long way, of course. 665 minus 360. Okay, because we haven't gone around twice yet. And if I do this subtraction, 5 minus 0 is 5. 6 minus 6 is 0. 6 minus 3 is 3. I would end up with a 305 degree angle. Okay, if I just went around once. So spinning 665 degrees is the same as spinning 305 degrees. Okay. But what about my reference angle? The reference angle is always the one formed with your x-axis. So this is going to be your reference angle. And since I'm in the fourth quadrant, I will do the entire 360 minus your coterminal. So minus 305. That gives me 55 degrees left over until I make it back to a complete circle. You want to either go to the 180 degree line if it's in the second or the third quadrant, or you go to the 360 line if it's in the fourth quadrant. So coterminal angle of 305 and a reference angle of 55 degrees. Oh, now we got some radian measures. So four pi's over three. Okay, so three you should know is, let's see, if I take 180 and divide it by 3, sorry, this is dividing by 3, I get 60 degrees. So every pi over 3 will be 60 degrees. So here is 0. I'm going to come up to 60 degrees. There's 1 pi over 3. Here's another 60 degrees, 2 pi is over 3. Here's another 60 degrees, 3 pi is over 3. 
And down here is another 60 degrees where 4 pi over 3 lives. So this will be the angle from our positive x to the 4 pi over 3 direction. So hopefully we can recognize we have converted and 4 pi over 3 is going to be 240 degrees as a degree. Okay, because 60 plus 60 plus 60 plus 60 is 240 degrees. And the alpha or your reference angle is in the third quadrant formed with your negative x-axis. So we do 240 minus 180 because we've got to get back there. So the reference angle in this case would be 60 degrees or pi over 3 if we were going to use the radian measure. 60 degrees is 1 pi divided by 3. 180 is pi. We're dividing that into thirds to get 60 degrees. So in the third quadrant, you take your coterminal angle and you subtract 180 to get the reference angle, the angle formed with the x-axis. Okay, 11 pi is over 6. So let's see. If I divide 180 by 6, that's 30 degrees. So 1 pi over 6 is 30 degrees, and I have to go 11 of them in the negative direction. So I start here and go down. There's 30 degrees 1. Here's another 30 degrees 2. There's another 30 degrees to 90. That's 3. And then we got 4 and 5 and 6, and then one more 30 degrees is. And some more 30s, 7 and 8 and 9. And then I have 10 and 11. So 11, 30 degrees is, ends me out right here. <clears throat> so there is the angle drawn for negative 11 pi's over 6. It ends up being in the first quadrant. <clears throat> so a coterminal angle would be just a positive one. So here's your positive, and then there's your 11 pi over 6. So that would be um, 1 pi over 6 would also be a way as a coterminal angle. Or we could write it as 30 degrees. Both of these things are the same place in the first quadrant. <clears throat> and since we're in the first quadrant, your reference angle is the same as your coterminal or your theta angle. <clears throat> <coughs> and the last thing, 19 pi over 4. If I take 180 and divide it by 4, that is 45. So I have to go 19 45 degree marks. So let's see. Here's 145 and 245 and 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 and 7 and 8 and 9 and 10, 11 and 12, and 13, 14, 15, 16. 17, 18, 19. So I go around two times and I end up right here. So there is 19 pi over 4 as an angle. Okay, so that would be the same as if I started out here and just did 1, 2, 3, 3 pi's over 4. So a coterminal angle in radians would be 3 pi's over 4 because they end up at the same place, which is 135 degrees. <clears throat> and my reference angle in the second quadrant is one formed with the negative x axis. So I subtract 180 minus this, and I get 45 degrees or just pi over 4 in radians. <clears throat> okay, so hopefully you have a better understanding of how we draw positive and negative angles in both degrees and in radians, as well as finding coterminal and reference angles.